Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my top six translated works from 2019. So a work in translation means that the original language that it was published in was not English. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the books. So number six on this list is Loyalties by Christine de Vigan. This is a French translation. So we are following Helene, who is a teacher, when she starts to notice that two of her boys, Theo and Matthias, are acting quite strangely, and she starts to have suspicions that something is off at home. However, you're viewing it through Helene's point of view, and she herself had a rough childhood, so you're not sure if what she is seeing is her being hypersensitive to it because of her past, or if she's actually right and the children are in a lot of danger. Um, this book is very short but very powerful and I read it pretty much in one sitting. Number five on my list is In Praise of the Stepmother by Mario Vargas Llosa and he is a Peruvian writer. So this is a very, very interesting one. It's very short but it does a really interesting thing with format where you keep flipping back and forth between um, vignettes of life in this family and then also works of classic art. And something about the art usually has to do with what is occurring in the story. So we are following a family, which is a father, his son, and then this new stepmother. And the dynamics in the family are off. And someone wants someone else removed <laughs> from the family. That's all I'm gonna say because I don't want to spoil anything else. However, this book is really polarizing because I think some things that happen in here people might have obviously a huge problem with. All I'm gonna say about this novel is that it is definitely up the weirder alley. I think it has a lot of staying power because of the unique formatting. I've never seen a book where it intersperses uh, classic art before, uh, so very intriguing. So if you're looking for a weird little gem, this might be it for you. Okay, so now we're going to switch from Peru to Japan. Uh, the next is a series that I want to talk about, which is The Girl from the Other Side by Nagabe. So this is a graphic illustration manga uh, done entirely in black and white, where we are dealing with a world that has the outsiders and the insiders. The insiders are humans which have barricaded themselves within these walled cities. The outsiders are monsters and the monsters are humans that have come into contact with other outsiders and they contract this um, disease, it's not really well known, but they turn into a monster within the span of like 24 hours and the longer they remain a monster, the more memories that they forget. So as the novel opens, a girl has been abandoned in the forest, and she's very tiny, and she has been looked after by an outsider. Um, and the only rule is that the outsider and the little girl cannot touch because then the little girl might become a monster. So I am four volumes into this series and it is really good and it's touching on a lot of themes that I wasn't sure it was going to go into. It's really heartbreaking. For me the strongest ones were one, two, and four. I thought three was a bit of a weaker volume, but if you're looking for a manga, a graphic illustration that packs a punch and has some fantastical elements and is a little dark, I really do highly recommend this. I really love the illustration style too. Um, it's quite sharp, uh, which I really like. I either like my illustrations to be quite round like Heartstopper or quite sharp like Nagabe. So um, yeah, highly recommend. So number three on my list is A Game We Play by Simona Vinci. This is an Italian translation and this one again is very polarizing. So this deals with a group of children who are playing one summer in Italy and there's nothing really to do in their town. Their parents are working or not minding them. So their parents basically say like after breakfast until dinner just go outside and play. So the children do go outside and play and they just run around the neighborhood, they invent games until one day when one of the older boys who's 15 finds a dirty magazine and he and some of the other children decide to try out some of the stuff in the magazine and things get progressively darker from there and this book does get extremely, extremely dark. So there are a lot of trigger warnings for this and just know that it's very, very dark, but the end I think made me feel a lot like how I felt reading We Need to Talk About Kevin by Lionel Shriver, where it's not so much what happens as how it happens, which is like the true discussion 
Like after I finished this book, I just, well, I felt very sick to my stomach first off. Um, but second off, I wanted to discuss it mostly like with my husband and say like, how could that thing be allowed to happen? Like who is truly at fault here for what has occurred? How could it been have how could it have been prevented or was it inevitable? Like whose fault, who does the blame truly lie with? And I think any book that really makes you think like that is worth uh, recommending to other people because it just stays with you and it's haunting. So um, I know that it's set in an idyllic Italian summer, but that is absolutely <laughs> not what this is about. If you're looking for that kind of novel, maybe something like uh, Call Me By Your Name by Andre Asman would be uh, less traumatic because this is definitely a super dark, tiny, but super dark. Number two on my list is A Planet for Rent by Yoss, who is a Cuban sci-fi writer. So this one, I wish, instead of it being termed a book or a novel, I wish it had been termed a series of short stories um, because it reads more like a series of short stories where some of the stories are interconnected, but a lot of them are not. So if you read a chapter and there's a character you like, they may or may not come back later. Like it didn't have a lot of continuity, um, if that makes sense. So this is a reimagining of Cuba's history as if Cuba is Earth. So Earth has been invaded by another, by other alien species and has basically been colonized and the humans that are living on the Earth have to deal with and live with their colonizers. So some people rebel, some people are having like underground um, societies that are trying to figure out ways around it, some people are leaving the planet altogether, some people are teaming up with colonizers to get off the planet, some people are you know, um, just find it, uh, having relationships with the colonizers, like there's all different aspects of dealing with the invasion. And some of the most gripping chapters in here are so like fresh in my mind, even though I read the book quite a while ago. And I think that that is a really strong feature of a writer. Um, and I just really, really enjoyed this. And I really thought it was so powerful. Um, many stories in here made me cry. So um, A Planet for Rent by Yoss is definitely one to check out um, if you're interested in sci-fi or Cuban translated literature. And the number one translated book I read in 2019 is Human Acts by Han Kong. This is a Korean translation. So I know that you guys have probably heard me talk about this quite a lot, but this is um, a novel following some uprisings that happened in Gwangju in South Korea and the government absolutely squashed them and just massacred their people. Um, and as an American, I was never taught about that in school, even though it happened within probably the last 30, 40 years. And I mean, that's just devastating. And yeah, man, the novel is so, so heartbreaking because you see it through all these different points of view. So the first point of view is a boy who is helping sort bodies that um, for family members. So he's helping reconnect corpses with their family members. Then another point of view is someone who is, has been shot. Another point of view is someone who was um, killed and they are still in the body, but kind of drifting along this body of corpses that has been left in a field. Um, and then you follow family members of those who are looking for people who haven't returned. It's just so, so heartbreaking. And it's very gruesome, like really, really gruesome. And it's based off of um, what really happened. So I think this is absolutely so important. I read The Vegetarian by Hong Kong and I didn't really like it, honestly. Uh, but I absolutely, really, really, really highly recommend Human Acts. It is just amazing. And I think it should be taught in schools, honestly. Um, I think it is very important piece of um, Asian and Korean literature. So that finishes up my works in translation that really, really stuck with me in 2019. If you guys have some recommendations for me, please do leave them below. I would love, love, love to hear about them. Um, I'm always looking out for translated works and I am planning to read a ton more in 2020. So if that's at all your cup of tea, do you think about hitting the like button or subscribe? That would be absolutely fabulous. I will chat to you guys in another video soon. 